The nurse is assisting with caring for a client who is receiving a unit of packed red blood cells. The nurse should tell the client that it is most important to report which sign immediately. A. Sore throat or earache. B. Chills, itching, or rash. C. Unusual sleepiness or fatigue. D. Mild discomfort at the catheter site. The correct answer is B. Chills, itching, or rash. Rationale, the client is told to report chills, itching, or rash immediately because these could be signs of a possible transfusion reaction. Mild discomfort at the catheter site may be indicative of a problem, or it could result from the size of the IV catheter required to infuse the blood product. Sore throat, earache, sleepiness, and fatigue are unrelated to a transfusion reaction. The nurse is assisting with caring for a client who has received a transfusion of platelets. The nurse determines that the client is benefiting most from this therapy if the client exhibits which finding. A. An increased hematocrit level. B. An increased hemoglobin level. C. A decline of the temperature to normal. D. A decrease in oozing from puncture sites and gums. The correct answer is D. A decrease in oozing from puncture sites and gums. Rationale, platelets are necessary for proper blood clotting. The client with insufficient platelets may exhibit frank bleeding or the oozing of blood from puncture sites, wounds, and mucous membranes. The client's temperature would decline to normal after the infusion of granulocytes if those transfused cells were then instrumental in fighting infection in the body. Increased hemoglobin and hematocrit levels would be seen when the client has received a transfusion of red blood cells. The healthcare provider prescribes one unit of packed red blood cells to infuse over four hours. One unit of blood contains 250 milliliters and the drop factor is 10 drops per 1 milliliters. How many drops per minute should the nurse infuse? A. 8 drops per minute. B. 10 drops per minute. C. 12 drops per minute. D. 14 drops per minute. The correct answer is B. 10 drops per minute. Rationale, the prescribed 250 milliliter is to be infused over 4 hours. Follow the formula and multiply 250 milliliter by 10. Then divide the result by 240 minutes. The infusion is to run at 10.4 or 10 drops per minute. A client with cancer is admitted to the oncology unit. Stat lab values reveal hemoglobin 12.6, white blood cells 6,500, potassium 1.9, uric acid 7.0, sodium 136, and platelets 178,000. The nurse evaluates that the client is experiencing which of the following? A. Hypernatremia. B. Hypokalemia. C. Myelosuppression. D. Leukocytosis. The correct answer is B. Hypokalemia. Rationale. Hypokalemia is evident from the lab values listed. The normal values for potassium is 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents per liter. The other laboratory findings are within normal limits, making answers A, C, and D incorrect. The nurse is working in the emergency room when a client arrives with severe burns of the left arm, hands, face, and neck. Which action should receive priority? A. Starting an IV. B. Applying oxygen. C. Obtaining blood gases. D. Medicating the client for pain. The correct answer is B. Applying oxygen. Rationale, the client with burns to the neck needs airway assessment and supplemental oxygen, so applying oxygen is the priority. The next action should be to start an IV and medicate for pain making answers A and C incorrect. Answer D, obtaining blood gases, is ordered by the doctor. A client has rectal cancer and is scheduled for an abdominal perineal resection. What should be the priority nursing care during the post-op period? 
A. Teaching how to irrigate the ileostomy. B. Stopping electrolyte loss in the incisional area. C. Encouraging a high encouraging a high fiber diet. D. Facilitating perineal wound drainage. The correct answer is D. Facilitating perineal wound drainage. Rationale: The client with a perineal resection will have a perineal incision. Drains will be used to facilitate wound drainage. This will help prevent infection of the surgical site. The client will not have an ileostomy, as in answer A, he will have some electrolyte loss, but treatment is not focused on preventing the loss, so answer B is incorrect. A high fiber diet, in answer C, is not ordered at this time. The nurse is performing discharge teaching on a client with diverticulitis who has been placed on a low roughage diet. Which food would have to be eliminated from this client's diet? A. Roasted chicken. B. Noodles. C. Cooked broccoli. D. Custard. The correct answer is C. Cooked broccoli. Rationale, the client with diverticulitis should avoid eating foods that are gas-forming and that increase abdominal discomfort such as cooked broccoli. Foods such as those listed in answers A, B, and D are allowed. A client in the cardiac step-down unit requires suctioning for excess mucus secretions. The nurse should be most careful to monitor the client for which dysrhythmia during this procedure. A. Bradycardia B. Tachycardia C. Premature ventricular beats D. Heart block The correct answer is A. Bradycardia. Rationale, suctioning can cause a vagal response and bradycardia. Answer B is unlikely and, therefore, not most important, although it can occur. Answer C and D can occur as well, but they are less likely. Salicylic acid is prescribed for a client with a diagnosis of psoriasis. The nurse monitors the client knowing that, which would indicate the presence of systemic toxicity from this medication. A. Tinnitus B. Diarrhea C. Constipation D. Decreased respirations The correct answer is A. Tinnitus Rationale, salicylic acid is absorbed readily through the skin and systemic toxicity can result. Symptoms include tinnitus, dizziness, hypernia, and psychological disturbances. Constipation and diarrhea are not associated with salicylism. Mephenide acetate is prescribed for the client with a burn injury. When applying the medication, the client complains of local discomfort and burning. Which is the most appropriate nursing action? A. Notifying the health care provider. B. Discontinuing the medication. C. Informing the client that this is normal. D. Applying a thinner film than prescribed to the burn site. The correct answer is C. Informing the client that this is normal. Rationale, mephenide acetate is bacteriostatic for gram-negative and gram-positive organisms and is used to treat burns to reduce bacteria present in avascular tissues. The client should be informed that the medication will cause local discomfort and burning, and that this is a normal reaction. The burn client is receiving treatments of topical mephenide acetate to the site of injury. The nurse monitors the client knowing that, which indicates a systemic effect has occurred. A. Hyperventilation B. Elevated blood pressure C. Local pain at the burn site D. Local rash at the burn site. The correct answer is A. Hyperventilation. Rationale, mephenide acetate is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and can suppress renal excretion of acid, thereby causing acidosis. Clients receiving this treatment should be monitored for signs of an acid-base imbalance. If this occurs, the medication should be discontinued for one to two days. Option C and D describe local rather than systemic effects. An elevated blood pressure may be expected from the pain that occurs with a burn injury. 
Isotretinoin is prescribed for a client with severe acne. Before the administration of this medication, the nurse anticipates that which laboratory test will be prescribed. A. Platelet count. B. Triglyceride level. C. Complete blood count. D. White blood cell count. The correct answer is B. Triglyceride level. Rationale Isotretinoin can elevate triglyceride levels. Blood triglyceride levels should be measured before treatment and periodically thereafter until the effect on the triglycerides has been evaluated. Options A, C, and D do not need to be monitored specifically during this treatment. The nurse is applying a topical corticosteroid to a client with eczema. The nurse should monitor for the potential for increased systemic absorption of the medication if the medication is being applied to which body area? A. Back B. Axilla C. Soles of the feet D. Palms of the hands The correct answer is B. Axilla Rationale Topical corticosteroids can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Absorption is higher from regions where the skin is especially permeable and lower from regions in which permeability is poor. The clinic nurse is collecting data on a client being admitted. The nurse notes that the client is taking azelaic acid. Because of the medication prescription, the nurse should suspect that the client is being treated for which condition? A. Acne B. Eczema C. Hair loss D. Minor bruise The correct answer is A. Acne Rationale Azelaic acid is a topical medication used to treat mild to moderate acne. The acid appears to work by suppressing the growth of Propionibacterium acnes and decreasing the proliferation of keratinocytes. The nurse employed in a long-term care facility calls the healthcare provider regarding a new medication prescription because the dose prescribed is higher than the recommended dosage. The nurse is unable to locate the HCP and the medication is due to be administered. Which action should the nurse take? A. Contact the nursing supervisor. B. Administer the dose prescribed. C. Hold the medication until the HCP can be contacted. D. Administer the recommended dose but continue to locate the HCP. The correct answer is A. Contact the nursing supervisor. Rationale If the HCP writes a prescription that requires clarification, it is the nurse's responsibility to contact the HCP for clarification. If there is no resolution regarding the prescription because the HCP cannot be located, or because the prescription remains as it was written after talking with the HCP, the nurse should then contact the nurse manager or supervisor for further clarification as to what the next step should be. Under no circumstances should the nurse proceed to carry out the prescription until clarification has been obtained. The nurse is assisting in reviewing the critical paths of the clients on the nursing unit. In performing a variance analysis, which indicates the need for further action and analysis. A. Clear breath sounds in a client with heart failure. B. A postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever. C. The absence of a wound infection in a client who had a coronary artery bypass graft. D. A client with diabetes mellitus demonstrating accurate use of a glucometer after teaching. The correct answer is B, a postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever. Rationale, variances are actual deviations or detours from the critical paths. Variances can be positive or negative, avoidable or unavoidable, and can be caused by a variety of factors. Positive variance occurs when the client achieves maximum benefit and is discharged earlier than anticipated. Negative variance occurs when untoward events prevent a timely discharge. A postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever identifies a negative outcome. A nursing student is planning care for a client with paraplegia who is at risk for injury because of spasticity of his leg muscles. 
The nurse intervenes if the student plans to include which intervention to minimize the risk of injury to the client. A. Use of padded restraints to immobilize the limb. B. Performing range of motion to the affected limbs. C. Removing potentially harmful objects near the spastic limbs. D. Use of as-needed prescriptions for muscle relaxants, such as baclofen. The correct answer is A. Use of padded restraints to immobilize the limb. Rationale Range of motion exercises are beneficial in stretching muscles, which may diminish spasticity. Removing potentially harmful objects is an important safety measure. Use of muscle relaxants also is indicated if the spasms cause discomfort to the client or pose a risk to the client's safety. Use of limb restraints will not alleviate spasticity and could harm the client. A client was involuntarily admitted to the psychiatric unit because of episodes of extremely violent behavior. The client is demanding to be discharged from the hospital. The nurse reports the information to the charge nurse, and the charge nurse does not allow the client to leave. The nurse understands that, which represents the legal ramifications associated with the charge nurse's behavior. A. The charge nurse will be charged with assault. B. The charge nurse will be charged with slander. C. The charge nurse will be charged with imprisonment. D. No charge will be made against the charge nurse because the charge nurse's actions are reasonable. The correct answer is D. No charge will be made against the charge nurse because the charge nurse's actions are reasonable. Rationale False imprisonment is an act with the intent to confine a person to a specific area. The nurse can be charged with false imprisonment if the nurse prohibits a client from leaving the hospital, if the client was voluntarily admitted, and if there are no agency or legal policies for detaining the client. On the other hand, if the client has been involuntarily admitted or has agreed to an evaluation before discharge, the nurse's actions are reasonable. The nurse observes an outburst by a client with a history of schizophrenia, during which the client uses extreme foul language. Which appropriate documentation should the nurse make for this occurrence? A. Document that the client is swearing loudly. B. Document that the client is having an outburst. C. Use quotation marks placing dashes and lines in the place of the profane words. D. Use quotation marks exact words and additional objective information about effect and nonverbal behavior. The correct answer is D. Use quotation marks exact words and additional objective information about effect and nonverbal behavior. Rationale Option D provides accurate, legally defensible information regarding the client's behavior. Options A and B are not objective. Option C is incomplete documentation and is not legally defensible. Emergency surgery is scheduled for a client with a bowel obstruction. The nurse tells the charge nurse that she is unable to obtain informed consent from the client because the client has received opioid analgesics and is sedated. The nurse understands that which action should be implemented. A. Performing the surgery without an informed consent. B. Having the client sign the consent form because this is an emergency situation. C calling the family and telling them that they must come to the hospital to sign the informed consent. D. Obtaining a telephone consent from the family member and ensuring that the oral consent is witnessed by two persons. The correct answer is D. Obtaining a telephone consent from the family member and ensuring that the oral consent is witnessed by two persons. Rationale. Every effort must be made to obtain permission from a responsible family member to perform surgery if the client is unable to sign the consent form. Telephone consent must be witnessed by two persons who hear the family member's oral consent. The two witnesses then sign the consent and document the name of the family member, noting that an oral consent was obtained. In emergencies, the client may be unable to sign and family members may not be available. In this type of a situation, the healthcare provider is legally permitted to perform surgery without consent. Consent is not informed if it is obtained from the client, who is confused, unconscious, mentally incompetent, or under the influence of sedatives. 
A mother calls a neighborhood nurse and tells the nurse that her three-year-old child has just ingested liquid furniture polish. Which action should the nurse instruct the mother to take first? A. Induce vomiting. B. Call an ambulance. C. Call the poison control center. D. Bring the child to the emergency department. The correct answer is C. Call the poison control center. Rationale, if a poisoning occurs, the poison control center should be contacted immediately. Vomiting should not be induced without instructions to do so, if the victim is unconscious or the substance ingested is a strong corrosive or petroleum product. Bringing the child to the emergency department or calling an ambulance would not be the initial action because this would delay treatment. The poison control center may advise the mother to bring the child to the emergency department if this is the case, the mother should call an ambulance. The nurse is assisting with caring for a client with abruptio placenta. While caring for the client, the nurse notes that the client begins to develop signs of shock. The nurse should take which action first? A. Monitor the urinary output. B. Monitor the maternal pulse. C. Turn the client onto her side. D. Monitor the maternal blood pressure. The correct answer is C. Turn the client onto her side. Rationale With a pregnant client who is in shock, the nurse would want to increase perfusion to the placenta. A simple way to do this that requires no equipment is to turn the mother on her side. This would increase blood flow to the placenta by relieving pressure from the gravid uterus on the great vessels. The nurse would immediately contact the healthcare provider. The other options would follow quickly. A woman in active labor has contractions every two to three minutes that last for 45 seconds. The fetal heart rate between contractions is 100 beats per minute. On the basis of these findings, which is the priority nursing action? A. Monitor the maternal vital signs. B. Notify the health care provider immediately. C. Continue monitoring labor and the fetal heart rate. D. Encourage relaxation and breathing techniques between contractions. The correct answer is B. Notify the health care provider immediately. Rationale Fetal bradycardia between contractions may indicate the need for immediate medical management. The nurse would immediately contact the health care provider. Options A, C, and D will delay necessary and immediate interventions. The nurse is caring for a postpartum client with a diagnosis of thrombophlebitis. The client suddenly complains of chest pain and dyspnea. The nurse should initially check which item. A. Vital signs. B. Fundal height. C. Presence of calf pain. D. Level of consciousness. The correct answer is A. Vital signs. Rationale Pulmonary embolism is a complication of thrombophlebitis. Changes in the vital signs are one of the first things to occur with pulmonary embolism because pulmonary blood flow is compromised. Fundal height is unrelated to the subject of the question. Calf pain is an indicator of thrombophlebitis. Level of consciousness may change as the condition worsens, worsening would indicate hypoxia. The nurse suspects that the client has a pulmonary embolism. Which is the most important nursing action? A. Monitor the vital signs. B. Elevate the head of the bed. C. Increase the intravenous flow rate. D. Administer oxygen by face mask as prescribed. The correct answer is D. Administer oxygen by face mask as prescribed. Rationale, because pulmonary circulation is compromised in the presence of an embolus, cardiorespiratory support is initiated by oxygen administration. Options A and B may be components of the plan of care, but they are not the most important actions. The nurse would not increase the intravenous rate without a prescription from the health care provider. The nurse notes that the four-hour postpartum client has cool, clammy skin and that she is restless and excessively thirsty. 
The nurse immediately notifies the health care provider and then performs which action? A. Checks the vital signs. B. Begins fundal massage. C. Encourages ambulation. D. Encourages the client to drink fluids. The correct answer is A. Checks the vital signs. Rationale. Symptoms of hypovolemia include cool, clammy, and pale skin, feelings of anxiety, and restlessness, and thirst. The nurse would check the vital signs. The nurse would not ambulate the client or encourage fluids until specific prescriptions are given to do so. There is no information in the question to indicate the need for fundal massage. The client with a cervical spine injury has crutch field tongs applied in the emergency department. The nurse should perform which essential action when caring for this client? A. Providing a standard bed frame. B. Removing the weights to reposition the client. C. Removing the weights if the client is uncomfortable. D. Comparing the amount of prescribed weights with the amount in use. The correct answer is D. Comparing the amount of prescribed weights with the amount in use. Rationale. Crutch field tongs are applied after drilling holes in the client's skull under local anesthesia. Weights are attached to the tongs which exert pulling pressure on the longitudinal axis of the cervical spine. The nurse ensures that weights hang freely and that the amount of weight matches the current prescription. The client with crutch field tongs is placed on a striker frame or rotor rest bed. The nurse does not remove the weights to administer care or change the level of tension or traction based on client comfort level. The nurse has provided discharge instructions to a client with an application of a halo device. The nurse determines that the client needs further teaching if which statement is made. A. I will use a straw for drinking. B. I will drive only during the daytime. C. I will use caution because the device alters balance. D. I will wash the skin daily under the lamb's wool liner of the vest. The correct answer is B. I will drive only during the daytime. Rationale, the client should not drive because the device impairs the range of vision. The halo device alters balance and can cause fatigue because of its weight. The client should cleanse the skin daily under the vest or the device to protect the skin from ulceration and should use powder or lotion sparingly or not at all. The wool liner should be changed if odor becomes a problem. The client should have food cut into small pieces to facilitate chewing and use a straw for drinking. Pin care is done as instructed. The nurse is caring for the client who has suffered spinal cord injury. The nurse further monitors the client for signs of autonomic dysreflexia and suspects this complication if which sign slash symptom is noted. A. Sudden tachycardia. B. Pallor of the face and neck. C. Severe, throbbing headache. D. Severe and sudden hypotension. The correct answer is C. Severe, throbbing headache. Rationale, the client with spinal cord injury above the level of T7 is at risk for autonomic dysreflexia. It is characterized by a severe, throbbing headache, flushing of the face and neck, bradycardia, and sudden severe hypertension. Other signs include nasal stuffiness, blurred vision, nausea, and sweating. It is a life-threatening syndrome, triggered by a noxious stimulus, below the level of the injury. The client with spinal cord injury is prone to experiencing autonomic dysreflexia. The least appropriate measure to minimize the risk of autonomic dysreflexia is which action? A. Strictly adhering to a bowel retraining program. B. Keeping the linen wrinkle-free under the client. C. Avoiding unnecessary pressure on the lower limbs. D. Limiting bladder catheterization to once every 12 hours. The correct answer is D. Limiting bladder catheterization to once every 12 hours. Rationale, the most frequent cause of autonomic dysreflexia is a distended bladder. Straight catheterization should be performed every four to six hours and indwelling bladder catheters 
should be checked frequently for kinks in the tubing. It is not appropriate to catheterize the client every 12 hours. Constipation and fecal impaction are other causes, so maintaining bowel regularity is important. Other causes include stimulation of the skin from tactile, thermal, or painful stimuli. The nurse administers care to minimize risk in these areas. The client with spinal cord injury suddenly experiences an episode of autonomic dysreflexia. After checking vital signs, which immediate action should the nurse take? A. Raise the head of the bed and remove the noxious stimulus. B. Lower the head of the bed and remove the noxious stimulus. C. Lower the head of the bed and administer an antihypertensive agent. D. Remove the noxious stimulus and administer an antihypertensive agent. The correct answer is A. Raise the head of the bed and remove the noxious stimulus. Rationale Key nursing actions are to sit the client up in bed, remove the noxious stimulus, and bring the blood pressure under control with antihypertensive medication per protocol. The nurse can also clearly label the client's chart, identifying the risk for autonomic dysreflexia. Client and family should be taught to recognize and later manage the signs and symptoms of this syndrome. The nurse is assigned to care for an adult client who had a stroke and is aphasic. Which interventions should the nurse use for communicating with the client? Select all that apply. A. Face the client when talking. B. Speak slowly and maintain eye contact. C. Use gestures when talking to enhance words. D. Avoid the use of body language when talking to the client. E. Give the client directions using short phrases and simple terms. F. Phrase what was said differently the second time, if there is a need to repeat it. The correct answers are A. Face the client when talking, B. Speak slowly and maintain eye contact, C. Use gestures when talking to enhance words, and E. Give the client directions using short phrases and simple terms. Rationale A client who is aphasic has difficulty expressing or understanding language. The nurse should face the client when talking, establish and maintain eye contact and speak slowly and distinctly. The nurse should use gestures and pantomime when talking to enhance words and use body language to enhance the message. The nurse should give the client directions using short phrases and simple terms and phrase questions so that they can be answered with a yes or no. If there is a need to repeat something, the nurse should use the same words a second time. The nurse is caring for a client with an intracranial aneurysm who was previously alert. Which finding should be an early indication that the level of consciousness is deteriorating? A. Drowsiness B. Clear speech C. Ptosis of the left eyelid D. Frequent spontaneous speech The correct answer is A. Drowsiness Rationale Early changes in level of consciousness relate to orientation, alertness, and verbal responsiveness. Less frequent speech, slight slurring of speech, and mild drowsiness are early signs of decreasing LOC. Ptosis of the eyelid is due to pressure on and dysfunction of cranial nerve 3 and does not relate to LOC. The nurse is planning to put aneurysm precautions in place for the client with a cerebral aneurysm. Which item should be included as part of the precautions? A. Limiting cigarettes to three per day. B. Allowing out-of-bed activities as tolerated. C. Maintaining the head of the bed at 15 degrees. D. Allowing one cup of caffeinated coffee per day. The correct answer is C. Maintaining the head of the bed at 15 degrees. Rationale. Aneurysm precautions include placing the client on bed rest with the head of the bed elevated in a quiet setting. Lights are kept dim to minimize environmental stimulation. Any activity such as pushing, pulling, sneezing, coughing, or straining that increases blood pressure or impedes venous return from the brain is prohibited. The nurse provides all physical care to minimize increases in blood pressure. 
For the same reason, visitors, radio, television, and reading materials are prohibited or limited. Stimulants such as caffeine and nicotine are prohibited. Decaffeinated coffee or tea may be given. The nurse is caring for a client who begins to experience seizure activity while in bed. Which action by the nurse would be contraindicated? A. Restrain the client's limbs. B. Loosen restrictive clothing. C. Remove the pillow and raise the padded side rails. D. Position the client to the side, if possible, with head flexed forward. The correct answer is A. Restrain the client's limbs. Rationale Nursing actions during a seizure include providing privacy, loosening restrictive clothing, removing the pillow, and raising the padded side rails in bed, and placing the client on one side, with the head flexed forward, if possible, to allow the tongue to fall forward and facilitate drainage. The limbs are never restrained because the strong muscle contractions could cause the client harm. If the client is not in bed, when seizure activity begins, the nurse lowers the client to the floor, if possible, protects the head against injury, and moves furniture that may injure the client. The client has a PRN prescription for lopyramide hydrochloride. The nurse understands that this medication is used for which condition? A. Constipation B. Abdominal pain C. An episode of diarrhea D. Hematest-positive nasogastric tube drainage The correct answer is C. An episode of diarrhea Rationale Lopyramide is an anti-diarrheal agent. It is used to manage acute and also chronic diarrhea in conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease. Lopyramide also can be used to reduce the volume of drainage from an ileostomy. A client with Crohn's disease is scheduled to receive an infusion of infliximab. The nurse assisting in caring for the client should take which action to monitor the effectiveness of treatment. A. Monitoring the leukocyte count for two days after the infusion. B. Checking the frequency and consistency of bowel movements. C. Checking serum liver enzyme levels before and after the infusion. D. Carrying out a hematest on gastric fluids after the infusion is completed. The correct answer is B. Checking the frequency and consistency of bowel movements. Rationale The principal manifestations of Crohn's disease are diarrhea and abdominal pain. Infliximab is an immunomodulator that reduces the degree of inflammation in the colon, thereby reducing the diarrhea. The client has begun medication therapy with pancrelipase. The nurse evaluates that the medication is having the optimal intended benefit, if which effect is observed. A. Weight loss. B. Relief of heartburn. C. Reduction of steatorrhea. D. Absence of abdominal pain. The correct answer is C. Reduction of steatorrhea. Rationale. Pancrelipase is a pancreatic enzyme used in clients with pancreatitis as a digestive aid. The medication should reduce the amount of fatty stools. Another intended effect could be improved nutritional status. It is not used to treat abdominal pain or heartburn. Its use could result in weight gain, but should not result in weight loss if it is aiding in digestion. An older client recently has been taking cimetidine. The nurse should monitor the client for which most frequent central nervous system side effect of this medication. A. Tremors. B. Dizziness. C. Confusion. D. Hallucinations. The correct answer is C. Confusion. Rationale. Cimetidine is a histamine 2 receptor antagonist. Older clients are especially susceptible to the central nervous system side effects of cimetidine. The most frequent of these is confusion. Less common central nervous system side effects include headache, dizziness, drowsiness, and hallucinations. The client who frequently uses non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs has been taking misoprostol. 
the nurse determines that the medication is having the intended therapeutic effect, if which is noted. A. Resolve diarrhea. B. Relief of epigastric pain. C. Decreased platelet count. D. Decreased white blood cell count. The correct answer is B. Relief of epigastric pain. Rationale, the client, who frequently uses non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, is prone to gastric mucosal injury. Misoprostol is a gastric protectant and is given specifically to prevent this occurrence. Diarrhea can be a side effect of the medication, but it is not an intended effect. The client has been taking omeprazole for four weeks. The nurse evaluates that the client is receiving an optimal intended effect of the medication if the client reports the absence of which symptom. A. Diarrhea. B. Heartburn. C. Flatulence. D. Constipation. The correct answer is B. Heartburn. Rationale, omeprazole is a proton pump inhibitor classified as an anti-ulcer agent. The intended effect of the medication is relief of pain from gastric irritation, often called heartburn by clients. The client with a gastric ulcer has a prescription for sucrophate 1 gram by mouth for times daily. The nurse should schedule the medication for which times? A. With meals and at bedtime. B. Every 6 hours around the clock. C. 1 hour after meals and at bedtime. D. 1 hour before meals and at bedtime. The correct answer is D. 1 hour before meals and at bedtime. Rationale, sucrophate is a gastric protectant. The medication should be scheduled for administration one hour before meals and at bedtime. The medication is timed to allow it to form a protective coating over the ulcer before food intake stimulates gastric acid production and mechanical irritation. A postoperative client requests medication for flatulence. Which medication from the following PRN list should the nurse administer to this client? A. Ondansetron. B. Cymethicon. C. Acetaminophen. D. Magnesium hydroxide. The correct answer is B. Cymethicon. Rationale, Cymethicon is an anti-flatulent used in the relief of pain caused by excessive gas in the gastrointestinal tract. Ondansetron is used to treat postoperative nausea and vomiting. Acetaminophen is a nonopioid analgesic. Magnesium hydroxide is an antacid and laxative. An adult client with hepatic encephalopathy has a serum ammonia level of 120 micrograms per deciliter and receives treatment with lactulose syrup. The nurse determines that the client has the best response if the level changes to which after medication administration a 2 micrograms per deciliter b 5 micrograms per deciliter c 70 micrograms per deciliter d 100 micrograms per deciliter the correct answer is c 70 micrograms per deciliter rationale the normal serum ammonia level is 10 to 80 micrograms per deciliter in the client with hepatic encephalopathy, the serum level is not likely to drop below normal. The most optimal, yet realistic change from the options provided would be 70 micrograms per deciliter, which falls in the normal range. A level of 100 micrograms per deciliter represents an insufficient effect of the medication. Lactulose is administered for its hyperosmotic laxative effect, thus removing ammonia from the colon. The client should also be monitored for hypokalemia, resulting from the severe purging lactulose causes. A client with a peptic ulcer is diagnosed with a Helicobacter pylori infection. The nurse is reinforcing teaching for the client about the medications prescribed, including clarithromycin, esomeprazole, and amoxicillin. Which statement by the client indicates the best understanding of the medication regimen? A. My ulcer will heal because these medications will kill the bacteria. B. These medications are only taken when I have pain from my ulcer. 
C. The medications will kill the bacteria and stop the acid production. D. These medications will coat the ulcer and decrease the acid production in my stomach. The correct answer is C. The medications will kill the bacteria and stop the acid production. Rationale Triple therapy for Helicobacter pylori infection usually includes two antibacterial drugs and a proton pump inhibitor. Clarithromycin and amoxicillin are antibacterial drugs. Esomeprazole is a proton pump inhibitor. These medications will kill the bacteria and decrease acid production.